It's Michael Vasilis from New Hunter Church of Christ. This is in a new segment for May the, I guess we say the thirty the thirtieth. Is it already May the thirtieth already? Wow. Well, I wanted to give you an analysis on our affiliate, what Infowar sent out about what we got from looking at the video, and from what happened out there in Arizona, around in the area of Phoenix, by a Maz mausoleum or moss actually a moss that was there uh muslim mosque uh, that was there they do believe that two or four people came from that um moss to shoot rampages to go and shoot and kill people in texas there's two people that died in texas they do believe were a result of that i wanted to tell you that for the most part the con the the police handled themselves professionally i was very very comm i want to commend them for doing that uh they were peaceful um, I mean, they didn't engage or cause riots like we saw in Ferguson, you know, they didn't cause or, you know, cause things to go into a riot like we saw in Cleveland, Ohio. I mean, Cleveland, uh, Maryland, I'm sorry. And uh, Cle I meant to say not, not Ohio, sorry. Uh, Maryland, Baltimore, Maryland is what I meant to say. Cleveland, Ohio was rather peaceful too. You know, people there were doing the same thing like they were doing in, uh, like they were doing in Phoenix, Arizona, they were racket they were trying to there were some people there were yelling racial marks to the police as well as to the uh and to the other people there of religious groups and sects and then there were isis was there making threats saying they were going to go into a fight go into the crowd and start stabbing people and then there was a threat on social media that they were to come in with a vehicle they call it an rfid they were going to go in with one of those, a vehicle that would have an explosive that would blow up in the crowd. But So they cordoned off the area. Since they received that, the government took notice of that, which was very good of the police to realize, to, to take a, be alert of that. And they cordoned off the area so new vehicles could get in the area. So I thought that was very well done. And I was very well proud of the Phoenix police there in Arizona and surrounding police departments that may have been helping as well. Um, and, of course, there was really no engagement. It's just like, you know, there was a veteran that basically set up this protest. You know, it was supposed to be peaceful, and that's what he wanted was peaceful protest so that Muslims could talk. You know, he wanted everybody to have freedom of speech because our freedom of speech, whether you realize it or not, or whether you want to realize it or accept it, is being threatened in every way and on every level and in every form. And that's why this whole... uh this whole process was orchestrated so that this could be done. And since he did that, ISIS made threats saying that he was going to murder, that they were going to murder his family and murder him. And now he has to go into hiding now. But he was only living there. If you watch the video, it says that he was only living there for a year. And he just moved to him and his family along with his family there. And now he has got to leave and go into hiding because of his life now has been threatened by ISIS. Uh, so we know that this this ISIS group is definitely has an aggressive history. They've gone all over the world, beheaded and burned people up in churches and burned crosses. And, you know, they've done all kinds of things of that way to start and to breed violence because they're trying to send a message that, you know, if you don't follow what we tell you, then we're going to kill you. And, you know, we're going to do we're going to do horrible things to you and your family. And that may include death. So, you know. It's just, and they were saying they were going to, there were some people there, Muslims and some ISIS people were saying there that were extremists in the group because there were peaceful Muslims there too. But there were some that were extreme saying they were going to rape a girl that was wearing pink. And of course, I hope that didn't happen, but I don't think so. She got it out of the area, but they were threatening to do that, to find her and to rape her. And uh, they actually said that on tape on the air. That's what uh, former Sergeant Joe Briggs said with the InfoWars Network, our affiliate, and it's just really bad. And excuse the language in the video because it is live. It's B-roll. So what you're seeing is live and it was being recorded. It's putting a whole lot of stuff on the processors and all. So if you'd like to send money to us and send money to InfoWars at this time, it would be very beneficial because a lot of work has been done behind the scenes to prepare, to collate, and to distribute this stuff across all types of platforms of social media so that you can get to see what's really going on since the dinosaur media wants to make it sound like it's hate speech and that's not controlled and that we need to push more laws or martial law to have control of speech altogether i'm going to tell you if we lose our speech we lose everything folks
That's just right down to the brass tacks of the whole thing. So, you know, if you really think that, you know, I believe that everybody can say what they want, but we have to be respectful. You know, there is a line. You know, you can say, I hate a certain group, or I hate the president even, if you hate him. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But when you start making personal threats towards the president, you know, then you can be in trouble for being locked up because you cannot threaten people. People say things all they want online when they get really angry. And they know they're very hateful, but they're allowed to say it because it's called freedom of speech. It's called freedom of expression. If you want to draw something, if you want to paint something, even though it may be offensive to some groups, it's their right to do so. It does not mean that it's wrong. People can disrespect religions if they're trumping on other, other people's rights and freedoms. It's just like, I, not, I may not agree with what Sean and Charlie teach over there at the Shields House, because I don't. A lot of things we do agree on more so than we don't. You know, thank God for that. But some of the things they teach I do not agree with, and I'm truthful. I'm going to tell the truth about it. But I'm not going to infringe on their rights or on what they want to teach, even though what they're teaching is wrong and is not biblical in some aspects. It's just the same way with you know Pentecostals. They have different beliefs from what Church of Christ has. And, you know, and Baptists have some different beliefs too, but I'm not going to trump on their freedoms or their rights because they have differences from what I believe. The time when it, the time when we need to step in is when people start threatening people's lives or when religions like the Muslim faith teaches that we need to cut off people's hands or deport them or even put their family or people to death because of what they believe. That's where there's a problem. If it includes killing people or doing things like that, like it teaches in the Quran, if people read the Quran that aren't Muslim, and even Muslims have admitted this to me too. It does say this because they have converted over to Christianity. Oh my goodness, we have a big uprising and converting in this country as well as around the world where Muslims have have, have actually walked away from their faith and went and were converted to Christianity because they didn't agree with what the Quran was teaching them. And it's just it's still going on, which is a wonderful thing, but I don't want to get off in that. I want to stay where I'm at here. But the thing is, it's really amazing what God is doing. But the thing is, at the same time, I love Muslims. If they want to believe what they believe, it's fine. Just as long as they don't try to take away or infringe on my beliefs. You know, see, there's a line there. It's like if you come over to our country, like I've always stated this, InfoWars has stated it really eloquently too. You know, what, what uh, Brian McKnight said, you know, and some of the things that Mr. Dew covered. <laughs> I love you, man. I love all y'all. But the thing is, I want to say what he covered, news do is what I call him. What he covered was really really astounding because basically it's what I've said too and what Alex Jones have said also exhorted. It's really true that we all need to get along. We need to be respectful for people's religions. I mean, when it starts infringing people's lives and freedom, that's when we need to draw the line. You know, people can draw something about Muhammad or draw something about Buddha or whatever. That's their right of freedom of this expression. That's what the amendments are. If you're not sure about the amendments, folks, go and look them up. They are on the web. You also can find stuff like this on the, at your local library. You know, if you're not sure about the Constitution, read it. Not all that stuff is outlaw like they want to lead you or misled you to believe. Now, a lot of stuff still is in effect. It's just the government has gone out here and put propaganda out, stating and saying that it's not in effect. And so we've had people like groups coming in there, you know, stirring up trouble and causing people, you know, trying to cause a riot, incite violence and riot there. But of course, that did not happen, thank God, in Phoenix, Arizona last night. So I want to say, you know, the media is going to, I guarantee you, they're going to say, well, oh, there's hate speech, oh, there was violence, there was mobs. I mean, CNN is already saying that there's no control over hate speech. It's like they're trying to stir up and provocate our government to relinquish martial law or to take away freedom of speech altogether. And that's what the dinosaur media's mission is, is to do that because they're the mouthpiece of the government and they're the ones that push the agenda because they've been bought off by the government. You know, two plus two equals nothing but four, nothing else. And so if you, you understand that, that's what's going on here. So what I wanted to tell you is I want to thank those people who like the post. I want to thank Laurie Denton Carter for, sending, for sharing some of my posts from InfoWars and also some of my posts. Thank you, Lori, for doing that. And I also really think you should really start a channel because you really have some good things to say, and I don't think you should stop saying them because what you're saying is the truth and it needs to be told and, and it needs to be shared. 
You know, that's what we're supposed to do as people in Christ. We're supposed to tell the truth, even if it costs us our livelihood or our life even, because we're here to unite people and to bring people to Christ. And how we do that is by sharing the truth, exposing the lies and the corruption. That's what real journalism truly is supposed to be about, not the way it's become today with the way the media and the news don't even report things. They're more concerned about an accident in Chesterfield that was, and a murder that was caused in, uh, you know, that was an accident in Hanover yesterday, and a, and a murder that was caused in uh, Chesterfield. And yeah, that's bad that that happened. But I think this Phoenix stuff, it was going on during that time when they were reporting this. They didn't mention anything about it. The local news didn't say nothing about it in the area. Isn't it kind of weird? That should be more important because there, there was there could have been a out there could have been a riot there, and things were high. As far as it being a provocateur or being a motive of psyop of the government, the verdict isn't fully out on that yet, but I believe from the evidence of what I saw, mostly was not uh, motivated by the government. It was just an individual who was a veteran who organized this thing for it to be peaceful. And I say peaceful because that's what he wanted was a peaceful protest. But other people, some were trying to make it into something else, which it did not become. I was very happy about that and pleased. So, you know, we really need to think about this, folks, because our freedoms are really being challenged and tread upon by the government right now and by people who want to take that away. So really think about this, folks, and really, you know, really stand up and tell the truth. This is the line in the sand. We cannot allow the government to take our freedom away, our speech away, or our guns away, because all these amendments really, you know, they just touched on the first two. But all these amendments all are connected with each other. They all say one thing, freedom. And if you infringe on any of those things, I'll leave you with this thought, then you take away all freedom. So you think about that. Thank you. This is Michael DeSilvis with InfoWars in the News. This is a real report about what's really going on in the real reality. So if you're in a trance, I challenge you to come out of it. Because if you don't, when you do come out, it's going to be too late. You think about it. I love you. This is Michael DeSilvis from InfoWars. Peace. Shalom.